How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. So it's Friday again, which means it's time for another tech news video where I go over all of the tech news that happened in the previous week. And today we do have a lot of CPU news to cover, both from Intel and AMD. So I'm looking forward to that. And also potentially a new gaming phone that's gonna come out, which I'm not pretty sh not sure how I actually feel about that gaming phones. Eh, I'm not sure if we're there yet, but anyway uh, in these videos I do not go over everything in depth because that would just take way too long So I cover the main uh, points of these topics So if you guys want to find out a bit more of all of the topics that I mentioned You can follow the links in your video description and go read up a bit more and then also before we start, I just want to let you guys know that I am planning to do some more behind the scenes style other weird videos on my second channel, We Do Stuff. I haven't posted there in a while, but you can go check out the video there and I'll explain everything to you guys. So with all of that being said, let's get into the tech news video right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get the best deals on all the latest gaming products? Well, Rebeltech is the best place to check out. They have a huge variety of peripherals, PC components, laptops, and just everything else you would need. And also from all your favorite brands like a Gigabyte, Asus, Corsair, and many more. So go check out rebeltech.co.za to get the products you're looking for at a low price. Okay, so starting off, we have some Ryzen 2000 news. Now, we do know that the new Ryzen uh, series is going to start off uh, launching on the 9th of April, so we're looking forward to that. But we have also been getting a lot of leaks of benchmarks, and then now we have also been seeing that they were listed on Amazon, and that is giving us some prices for the CPUs. So first up, the MSRP for the previous versions, especially for the 2700X and the 2700, is actually more than the new 2000 series, with the 2700X going for $369 compared to $399, uh, that's for the 2700X, and for the 2700, that one is going for $299 instead of the 1700, which was going for $329. So we're getting a more performance approximately they say it's about 18 percent faster than uh, the previous first generation so we're getting faster cpus and at a lower price which is very good news especially if you are looking to build a new gaming system especially with ryzen cpus but let me know in the comments down below if you guys are looking to actually build yourself a gaming system with these new ryzen 2000 series chips i will be planning hopefully if i'm able to make a reviews on these cpus uh if they when they come out in april so i am really looking forward to trying them out and then next up we have some uh, mobile cpu news from intel now usually with mobile cpu announcements there's not really that much hype but i do think with these there has to be a bit more hype because now intel is releasing an i9 mobile cpu so the i9 8950hk the i7 8850h and the i7 8750h are all six cores 12 thread cpus which is going to go into mobile workstations now these are pretty much the top of the range CPUs, especially with that i9, which is going to be probably the most powerful mobile CPU to date. Now again, these leaks are actually from Lenovo's side with uh, some of their new laptops bring, coming out with uh, these CPUs. Now they did do some benchmarks on Cinebench and Geekbench, but it's not really exactly on the spots, uh, as you guys will now see. So looking at the Cinebench benchmarks, we can see uh, that the 8850H did actually score better than the 8950HK, which should be a lot faster, but the 8950HK was running at a higher voltage than the 8850H, which uh, could cause the 8950HK to not turbo boost as high uh, because of temperatures to keep it actually in check. Also, we're not really sure on what systems they used uh, different CPUs because uh, from the information we gathered, it's not on the exact same mobile 
system. Some of them have a GTX 1080 inside. One of them has a GTX 1060 inside. So that could be different models of notebooks and also different cooling systems. So that could have caused the 8950HK to thermal throttle a bit or just keep the temperatures in check uh, and that would not allow it to boost at that high compared to the 8850H. But I can definitely say that this i9 8950HK is going to be a beast. If we just look at it compared to the 8700HQ, which is currently Intel's most powerful notebook processor, with the 8700HK, that one has six cores, 12 threads, nine megs of L3 cache, and a base clock of 2.4 gigahertz that can boost up to 3.6 gigahertz. Now, the 8950HK also has six cores and 12 threads, but has has 12 megabytes of L3 cache and has a base clock of 2.9 gigahertz and is able to boost with all six cores up to 4.3 gigahertz and at a single core is able to boost up to 4.8 gigahertz. So that is quite a high boost clock for a six core mobile CPU and these CPUs will also be unlocked so you will be able to overclock them a bit. Uh, temperatures will just have to be kept in check but I'm really looking forward to checking these out uh, alongside some of the AMD ones especially that uh, AMD 1700X which we have been seeing in some notebook systems. And then some more news of Intel CPUs and these ones are actually from ASUS and Amazon. So on these websites they have actually leaked that there are some uh, new Intel CPUs being uh, released and we have covered these in some of the previous episodes uh, but it's going to be like the i5-8400 and there's even going to be now the T-series of uh, some of these CPUs. So the T-series is more for uh, businesses who want a less power usage of the CPUs and don't really mind losing a bit of performance, uh, especially with the CPUs actually having a TDP of only 35 watts compared to 65 watts. So some of the businesses might be looking for these. Uh, I wouldn't rec really recommend you getting them for uh, just a normal gaming system because you do want that higher performance, but they are going to come out. Uh, no exact date on when they're out yet, but it should still be in this month and then next up we have some mobile news if you guys did like the Razer gaming phone with the 120 hertz um, display and all of that then you might be looking forward to one of uh, this one which is uh, the black shark from Xiaomi so Xiaomi is more of an Asian company that do make a lot of different brands. I have covered some of their products before, like my LED lights and everything. Uh, but now they're making a gaming phone potentially. So the Black Shark is going to predict it to have a 120 hour screen, some dual stereo speakers, and it's just going to be balls to the wall with uh, specs. So, so some of the benchmarks we've been seeing from Geekbench is that the Black Shark scored in single core performance 2,452 points and in multi-core test it scored 8,452. So that's even more than the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus which has just been released. So rumors is that this one will also have better cooling compared to the Razer phone, which does thermal throttle quite a lot if you go on a long gaming session. But we do not have exact confirmation of anything yet. It's still everything is rumors. So I'm looking forward to checking this out. I do think Xiaomi does make very good products. And if they can just get out a bit more, then that would be really cool. So yeah, gaming phones, I don't know yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing how it actually is. And then as for the last topic is for all of you, again, probably mobile gamers out there and perhaps some other Switch gamers as well. I'm not too sure yet. But now we all know about Pokemon Go where you were able to walk out into the streets and catch Pokemon and just do some exercise actually without just sitting on the chair becoming fat like I am. But now the one problem Pokemon Go had from the developer Niantic, which is also a subdivision of Google, was that the mapping wasn't really that great and it was kind of a bit limiting in my opinion. But now Google has actually announced that they are bringing out a Google Maps API for game developers. So game developers will be able to actually in integrate Google Maps into their games. And with Pokemon Go, it wasn't really there. They were able to use some of the tracking 
but they weren't able to really uh, put you in the exact same spot and you could see some of the surroundings uh, whereas now you are going to be able to so how this is going to work is that the game developers will be able to integrate their Google API Google Maps API into their game and you will actually be able to look at the all of the surroundings in game so if you're in the middle of Times Square you'll be able to see actually Times Square around you on the map and you'll be able to remap some of the textures to make it look a bit different so some games that is already going to use uh, this uh, API is uh, Jurassic World Live, The Walking Dead Our World, and then also Ghostbusters World. So they are already working on this. And from the videos that is out already, it looks pretty interesting. I'm not too sure about the uh, Walking Dead one, but the potential of this actually working is going to be insane. If they can do this, you'll be able to play a lot more with other people. If they can integrate this with much more a multiplayer style of gameplays it's going to be awesome and this could just be the future of of mobile games and instead of you just sitting at home doing nothing you can actually go out and actually meet new people because that was kind of the one thing of Pokemon Go, you teamed up with a lot of other people and if you saw somebody playing, you would go talk to them and just hang out for a bit and that actually made the game a lot more fun and now they're able to do this at a much higher level which is going to be really, really awesome. So I am looking forward to seeing what the game developers can develop with this new Google Maps API. But that's pretty much it for this tech news video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. Also, check out my second channel. I'll link in the video description if you want to see some behind the scenes stuff. It's not really that crazy there, but um, I'm maybe getting there. I don't know yet, but yeah. <laughs> also, if you guys have any topics you want me to mention in the next, uh, pre next installment of This Week in Tech, yeah, uh, you guys can message me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. I don't really care which one. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will check all of you guys next time and enjoy your weekend. Cheers, guys.